Imagine being miles away from land, surrounded by nothing but the vast ocean. The gentle rocking of the waves, the salty air, the endless horizon, it seems peaceful, serene, almost isolating. Now, imagine that setting turning into your worst nightmare. The gentle rocking becomes violent, the salty air carries whispers of dread, and the endless horizon hides unseen terrors. Today we delve into three true chilling tales from the deep waters, stories of cruise ships, those floating cities of luxury transformed into vessels of fear. Our first story takes us back to 1987, aboard the opulent Queen Mary II, a name synonymous with luxury and grandeur. But beneath the glittering chandeliers and lavish ballrooms, a darkness lingered. Passengers began reporting strange occurrences, fleeting glimpses of figures in the hallways, whispers carried on the wind, and an unshakable feeling of being watched. One couple, honeymooning on the ship, described waking in the night to see a shadowy figure standing at the foot of their bed. They said it felt like an icy hand gripped their hearts, a cold dread that clung to them even after the figure vanished. The ship's staff tried to quell the rising panic, dismissing the sightings as overactive imaginations fueled by too much champagne in the vastness of the ocean. But the reports continued, whispers of a haunting spreading through the ship like a virus. A young boy, traveling with his family, claimed to see a woman in a white gown standing on the deck, staring out at the endless ocean. He said she looked sad, lost, and that her eyes seemed to follow him wherever he went. His parents initially dismissed it as a child's fancy, but the boy's insistence and the growing number of similar sightings started to chip away at their certainty. The stories grew more frequent, more detailed, more unsettling. Passengers reported seeing a man in a captain's uniform, his face obscured by shadows, walking the decks late at night. Others spoke of hearing phantom footsteps outside their cabins, the sound of a woman weeping echoing through the corridors. The Queen Mary II, once a symbol of luxury and escape, was now a floating prison of fear. Was it mass hysteria, the result of being confined on a ship in the middle of the ocean? Or was there something more sinister at play, a darkness that clung to the ship, feeding off the fear of its passengers? Some whispered of the ship's history, of past tragedies at sea, of souls lost and never recovered. They speculated that these lost souls, unable to find peace, were now trapped on the ship, doomed to wander its decks for eternity. The crew, desperate to maintain order and protect the reputation of the Queen Mary II, tried to rationalize the events. They blamed it on pranks, on overactive imaginations, on the power of suggestion. But even their explanations couldn't completely erase the fear that had taken root. The passengers, once eager to enjoy their luxurious voyage, now moved through the ship with a nervous energy, their eyes darting to shadows, their ears attuned to every creak and groan of the vessel. The haunting, if that's what it was, continued throughout the journey, casting a pall over the once joyful atmosphere. The Queen Mary II, a symbol of elegance and grandeur, had become a chilling reminder that even in the lap of luxury, darkness can find its way in. Our next tale takes us to the Caribbean, where a luxury liner was making its way through the turquoise waters, a floating paradise of sun, fun, and cocktails. But for one passenger, the dream vacation would become a terrifying mystery. Sarah, a young woman traveling alone, was last seen on the deck, enjoying the sunset. Her cabin mate reported her missing the next morning when Sarah didn't return. At first, the crew assumed Sarah had simply overslept or was enjoying a day of exploring a port of call. But as the hours passed and there was still no sign of her, a chilling realization began to dawn. Sarah had vanished without a trace. A thorough search of the ship yielded nothing. Sarah's belongings were still in her cabin, untouched. There was no sign of a struggle, no indication of foul play. She had simply vanished into thin air. The passengers, initially oblivious to the unfolding drama, were soon informed of Sarah's disappearance. The carefree atmosphere evaporated, replaced by a palpable unease. Whispers of man overboard and did she jump, circulated through the decks, each retelling adding another layer of fear and uncertainty. The captain, a seasoned sailor with a calm demeanor, assured the passengers that they were doing everything they could to locate Sarah. But as the days turned into nights, and the vastness of the ocean became more apparent, hope began to dwindle. The ship, once a beacon of leisure and luxury, was now a crime scene, the seemingly endless ocean a silent accomplice. Divers scoured the surrounding waters, helicopters scanned the vast expanse, but there was no sign of Sarah. 
The mystery deepened. Had she fallen overboard? Had she met with foul play? Or had something more sinister, something beyond human comprehension, claimed her? The lack of answers only fueled the growing sense of dread. The passengers, once eager to socialize and enjoy the amenities, retreated into themselves, their eyes filled with suspicion, their laughter replaced by hushed whispers. The once vibrant ship now echoed with an unsettling silence, broken only by the sound of the waves and the creaking of the vessel. The official investigation concluded that Sarah had most likely fallen overboard, a tragic accident. But the lack of a body, the absence of any witnesses, and the sheer improbability of her vanishing without a trace left many unanswered questions. Some passengers, haunted by Sarah's disappearance, whispered of supernatural forces at play. They spoke of the ocean's vastness, of its hidden depths, of its power to swallow secrets whole. The cruise continued, but the shadow of Sarah's disappearance lingered, a chilling reminder that even amidst the luxury and grandeur, the ocean holds its secrets close, and sometimes those secrets claim those who dare to venture too far. Our final story takes us deep into the belly of a massive cargo ship, where the rhythmic churning of the engines provides a constant, almost hypnotic soundtrack. This is where the ship's heart beats, where steel and sweat meet to propel the vessel across the ocean. But in this industrial labyrinth, something lurks in the shadows, something that defies explanation. The crew began noticing strange occurrences, tools going missing, equipment malfunctioning, and a persistent feeling of being watched. At first, they dismissed it as fatigue, the long hours and monotonous routine playing tricks on their minds. But as the incidents escalated, a chilling realization took hold. They were not alone. One night, a crew member making his rounds swore he saw a shadowy figure darting between the massive engines. He described it as a hulking presence, almost inhuman, its eyes glowing in the dim light. Terrified, he fled, his heart pounding in his chest, the image seared into his memory. Word of the sighting spread through the ship like wildfire, fueling the growing unease. The crew, hardened by years at sea, found themselves looking over their shoulders, their senses heightened, their minds playing tricks on them. The engine room, once a place of familiar routine, had become a breeding ground for fear. The stories grew more frequent, more detailed, more unsettling. One crew member claimed to have felt a cold hand on his shoulder while working on a piece of machinery. Another swore he heard whispers in the deafening roar of the engines, whispers that spoke his name, whispers that chilled him to the bone. The captain, a pragmatic man of logic and reason, initially dismissed the reports as superstition, the result of exhaustion and the confined environment. But as the incidents persisted, even he began to question his own convictions. The ship's engineer, a grizzled veteran with decades of experience at sea, suggested performing a ritual, an ancient maritime tradition meant to appease the spirits of the sea. He argued that the ship, built on the backs of countless hours of labor, might have inadvertently disturbed something ancient, something that now sought to reclaim its territory. The crew, desperate for a solution, readily agreed. They gathered in the engine room, their faces illuminated by the flickering lights, their voices a hushed murmur in the cavernous space. The engineer, his voice raspy but firm, led them through the ritual, chanting ancient words, offering tokens of respect to the unseen forces that surrounded them. Whether it was the power of the ritual or simply the psychological comfort it provided, the strange occurrences ceased. The engine room, once a place of dread, returned to its familiar rhythm, the churning of the engines now a comforting sound. But the memory of the entity, the unseen presence that had haunted them, lingered. The crew, forever changed by their encounter with the unknown, carried with them a newfound respect for the mysteries of the deep, a silent acknowledgement that some things are best left undisturbed. These stories remind us that the sea, as beautiful as it is, holds mysteries and horrors that sometimes come to the surface. The vastness of the ocean, its depths unplumbed, its secrets whispered on the wind, can be both alluring and terrifying. As we sail across its surface seeking adventure or escape, we must remember that we are merely visitors in a realm far older and more powerful than ourselves. Thanks for watching and remember, stay safe on your travels. The next time you find yourself on a cruise, listening to the gentle rocking of the waves, remember the stories we've shared and keep one eye on the shadows. You never know what might be lurking beneath the surface.